Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Holy Trinity Scottish Episcopal Church here in Dunfermline. To this, our Easter, um, second Sunday after Easter Eucharist. We welcome you, and this morning I know that there are friends and family from a varied amount of places, not just local here in Fife, but throughout Scotland and indeed England, who are watching with us and worshipping with us this morning. We welcome you in this act of worship today. I also know that um, sadly today is the last day of the Easter holidays for our young church and that homeschooling starts again tomorrow. We Frank, as you know, sits beside me at the church here representing the young church. And he said to me earlier, to all the young church, enjoy school when you get back to it, even if it's at home, do your best and make it as much fun as you can. Let us pray together. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And we pray, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Amen. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> God is love and we are God's children. There is no room for fear in love. We love because God loved us first. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. God our Father, we confess to you and to our fellow members in the body of Christ that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. Forgive us our sins and deliver us from the power of evil for the sake of your Son who died for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. God, who is both power and love, forgive us and free us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by the Holy Spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We call it for today, the second Sunday of Easter. Almighty God, in your great goodness, grant that we, as pilgrims through the Eastern mysteries, may hold them fast in our lives, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. <clears throat> Our first reading this morning comes from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 14a, and then verses 22 to 32. On the day of Pentecost, Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders and signs that, did, that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, 
because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full, full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I must say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. And our second reading comes from the first letter of Peter, chapter 1, verses 3 to 9. <clears throat> Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for by his great mercy he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that more perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. And a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter, beginning at the 19th verse. Glory to Christ our Saviour. When it was evening on the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed in them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written, so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Give thanks to the Lord for his glorious gospel. Praise to Christ our Lord. The disciples 
were naturally quite frightened at the events they had experienced. Yet it is Jesus who speaks to this fear when he stands among them. Words of peace are offered and new strength from the Holy Spirit is given. Thomas, who did not witness this wonderful event, states that he will not believe in the resurrection till it can be proved beyond doubt. Thankfully, when put to the test, his adamant stance fades away and he believes. Fear, peace and doubt are words that have perhaps taken on greater meaning in these challenging and worrying times. Fear is quite natural. Fear for self, fear for loved ones, fear for others who we do not know, yet who we know to be worried. Fear is not a betrayal of trust. It is a natural emotion and experience. It must not be silenced by the stiff upper lip that some people would refer to. Yet neither must it be allowed to get out of control. Fear has to be named and then it can be dealt with. It is to this fear that the voice of Jesus speaks words of comfort. Peace be with you. Jesus did not chastise the disciples for being fearful. Instead, he spoke words of comfort. It is such words of comfort that we must hold on to in this tragic and worrying time. It is such words of comfort that we ourselves must receive and offer to others. It is all right to acknowledge our own fear and anxiety, yet at the same time, placing our trust in God. There are, as we know, many Thomases who will challenge belief and are adamant that since they have not seen a specific event, therefore it cannot have happened. People who today will say that what is happening isn't as bad as others are making out. Sadly, for some people, it is only after they have been challenged that their views can change. Yet change they must. Jesus stood amongst the disciples and spoke of peace. Thomas doubted and then believed. Let us, in our own way, acknowledge our own fears and our own challenges and place them before Jesus, trusting that as he did with his disciples, so he will do with us and he will give us his peace. Amen. And we affirm our faith together in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one substance with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified and has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we move into our time of intercession and prayer. 
And this morning I'm going to use the second form of intercession that is contained in our 1982 liturgy. This has the form of saying a petition and allowing silence. And I would ask that in the silence you offer your own prayers wherever you may be. O God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom you chose us before the foundation of the world and destined us in love to be your own, help us to pray for all your children. For the life of the world, that your peace may be known and may prevail. Lord, hear us. For all who suffer injury, death or loss, that they may know the hope to which you call us. And as we pray for all who have died, we remember the many hundreds who have died from this coronavirus, those whose num names will be remembered today. But we pray also for those who we know ourselves. And so today, today we offer our prayers for Katie, for James, and for Maureen. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Lord, hear us. For all who exercise rule and authority, that they may acknowledge your power. Lord, hear us. For the church which is Christ's body, that it may live for the praise of your glory. For Mark, our Primus, Ian, our Bishop. For our brothers and sisters in the Orthodox Church, who today celebrate the great feast of Easter. Lord, hear us. And today we offer our grateful thanks for all who seek to help others. Remembering especially at this time, all who work for our National Health Service, all who work in care homes, our emergency services, our council services, those who work in our service industry, providing and distributing and selling food. Let us give thanks for those who this day put their lives at risk that others may live. Lord, hear us. O oh God, you exerted your strength and power when you raised Christ from the dead, putting everything in subjection beneath his feet. Accept the prayers which we offer in his name for the world you have created and redeemed through him in whom you have set forth the mystery of your will to unite all things in heaven and on earth. Your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And we come to the point in our service where we remember one another in God's love and we pray for peace. The risen Lord appeared amongst his disciples, his disciples and said to them, peace be with you. 
And so today we meet in Christ's name. Let us share his peace and the peace be with you all. Amen. And now let us present our offerings to the Lord. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own we give you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Worship and praise belong to you, author of all being. Your power sustains, your love restores our broken world. You are unceasingly at work, from chaos bringing order and filling emptiness with life. Christ, raised from the dead, proclaims the dawn of hope. He lives in us that we may walk in light. Your spirit is fire in us. Your breath is power to purge our sin and warm our hearts to love. As children of your redeeming purpose, freed by him who burst from the tomb and opened the gate of life, we offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Praise and thanksgiving be to you, Lord of all, for by the cross eternal life is ours, and death is swallowed up in victory. In the first light of Easter, glory broke from the tomb and changed the women's sorrow into joy. From the garden the mystery dawned that he whom they had loved and lost is with us now in every place forever. Making himself known in the breaking of the bread, speaking peace to their fearful disciples, welcoming weary fishermen on the shore. Your son, Jesus Christ, renewed the promise of his presence and of new birth in the spirit, who sets the seal of freedom on your sons and daughters. Before he was given up to suffering and death, recalling the night of Israel's release, the night in which slaves walked free, at supper with his, his disciples, he took bread, and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, it is broken for you. After supper, he took the cup, he offered you thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We now obey your son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon this bread and this wine, that overshadowed by the Spirit's life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us, who are baptised into the fellowship of Christ's body, to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love, until at last in your new creation we enter into our heritage, in the company of the Virgin Mary, the Apostles and Prophets, and of all our brothers and sisters living and departed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All honour and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen. The living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, unite us in this sign. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. In the sacrament, we share together, wherever we may be, in spiritual communion, one with another. Give thanks to our gracious God, whose mercy endures forever. Father, we have seen with our eyes and touched with our hands the bread of life. Strengthen our faith that we may grow in love for you and for each other. Through Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make us perfect in every good work, working in us that which is well-pleasing and good, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Before our dismissal, can I remind you all, if you would, to light a candle this evening at seven o'clock, to place it in a window, perhaps alongside a teddy for the younger ones, and showing that we believe in hope, that we believe in the light of the world, the risen Lord. The next service that we will broadcast will be on Thursday morning. And again, you are most welcome to join us then at 10.15 or next Sunday at 11 o'clock. Wherever you are, please stay safe and stay well. Go in peace now to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>